We're coming off an exhilarating win for the Philadelphia Eagles in an away game against the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going to say Rams or uh, Raiders and Chargers. But, man, um, after a rocky start with the defense giving up so many points, the end of the first half and the rest of the game, man, what a difference halftime adjustments make, as well as being aggressive at the end of the first half, which we'll also look at a little bit and uh, dive into some other issues. But first, let's look at the snap count and see who played too little, who played too much, and uh, where else we can make adjustments. What's up, it's your boy Citron coming back at you with another analysis video that keeps you not, that's a real name. And first of all, let's get into the Eagles snap count analysis, week five at Rams. So yeah, we need to talk about this guy here. But first, Jalen Hurts, um, not really the snaps like every week, but ran the ball a little bit too much for my comfort. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it worked obviously, but you definitely want to uh, not see him almost pop out his knee as it looked on um, one scramble. I think I'm 39, but uh, he, you know, he he got some tough yards, took some hits, um, didn't look to be of the dangerous variety, but, you know, all it takes is one from the wrong angle and unexpected to uh, put him on the shelf or potentially in the season. So let's be careful there. Um, DeAndre Swift thought he could have gotten maybe a couple more carries, but let's just base the fact that Kenneth Gainwell needs less snaps. But who do we replace him with? I, I think it's really time for us to see Rashad Penny and see what he can bring in um, being the bell cow. Um, not, sorry, um, being the uh, clipboard boy to the bell cow. But I think he gives us a, he would give us, theoretically, a tough uh, inside running presence. And I would welcome that. I know he doesn't offer anything in the receiving game. That's why you still keep Gamewell out there. But Gamewell was also a liability in um, pass pro. He allowed three pressures, so he's just not showing the juice. And then, you know, 17 on seven. Yeah, he's not really providing, you know, the bang that we thought he would uh, for our buck when we uh, touted him in the offseason as potentially being a uh, lead back. All right, I have no problems with A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Quez Watkins' their snaps. I mean, sorry, um, A.J. Brown, Devonta, we'll get to Dallas in a second. I misspoke there gravely. But uh, Devonta, he needs to be targeted more. Um, I think two targets for, you know, one, one catch for six yards, and they had to work him in later. They were using him strictly as a decoy, and I get that, you know, um, you know, it, it's what worked uh, with the and the Rams not trying to get beat deep, but you need to keep your young star involved, keep him mentally checked into the game. Um, but definitely Quez Watkins, 52 snaps to Olamide Zacchaeus 9. When we're outside the red zone, I, you, there can be a case made for, you know, um, putting him on the field for that game-breaking uh, speed, even though we didn't, you know, take any shots to him. I don't you know, think. No, we, we didn't, but, you know, uh, I don't know if we threatened him on some routes. I'd rather go and look at the tape. But Olam Zidizikias, he runs a 4-4, so he's not too far behind, and he's just way more consistent. Um, he has, I think, between 50 and 70 yards. Um, way more production than... Um, Quez has given us over his last nine starts, going back to last season. And, yeah, it, it's, it, you know, th like I said, the dabbing play yesterday was the, you know, bubble screen, him not cutting up the field, getting the yards, you know, that were there to be had, perfectly blocked. He just tried to get cute going to the outside, string it out, maybe trying to avoid contact. I don't know, that hamstring injury is that, you know, affecting his judgment, but He's a lesser role player, and he's been put in that um, position, in a primetime position, to make plays. Olamide Zacchaeus, you know, versus, I think it was the Vikings, he made those plays, the, um, the catch down sideline and then the touchdown, 34-yard uh, touchdown score. He's making plays with the opportunities that he's been given. Quez is not. So we just have to look at that. And I know they're trying to push Quez to be the, the number three, but he just hasn't been that. So stop trying to force the issue and go with the actual effective player. All right, let's get to the tight ends. Have no qualms with the numbers there. Jack Stahl, you could make a push to say that, you know, he needs to be featured a little bit more to, you know, have a credible threat. But I just don't think we're going to have that second tight end emerge this season. Alberto, if we ever get him up to speed, potentially. But until then... I think we're fine with where things going. And finally, 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 they got Dallas Goddard untracked. Um, got him the necessary targets. Eight catches, 117 in a TD. 
just the game he needed after coming in with just a paltry 88 yards, you know, 22 per game average. Man, I cannot say enough about that. Um, this old line, man. Um, all the staff, of course, justified. Sue Opeta, um, the way they took care of Aaron Donald, Jason Kelsey said they took and they made a game plan for him. New formation, kind of like this shape, where they had never uh, done it before um, in a game, but kind of ping pong him off of two guys, and you know it was Lane Johnson at times and uh, taking him because they're moving him around in formation, trying to find a weakness, uh, an advantage to take a uh, place to uh, have an advantage and take take advantage of, but it was not to be found, and um, I think they did a good, good job protecting Sewell, but I, I want to guess and say that he had some one-on-ones where he's, you know, he was able to um, keep him in check, but like the way that they were able to take him out of the you know, the game and, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, there are two guys on him at, at certain times. Um, and saying that maybe we're not going to use that again, but <clears throat> we do have Chris Jones coming up on the schedule and that will be a game that will, um, Cam Dragons will not be in there for. So we could throw that back in there. Um, just another caveat, you know, um, Hoping it's not a feather in the cap, but that was excellent, excellent, excellent execution on a game plan going in to neutralize one of the best pass rushers historically in the game. And, um, yeah, I just you want to see more of that to deal with uh, those imposing threats. Because you have, you know, Quentin Williams coming up um, next game, as well as after that, Christian Wilkins, who's a top 10 D tackle. So we'll see how they deal with it. But um, I really love what they did on the interior there. Edge rushers. You know, I have no qualms with you know the snaps here. This guy, he's got to he's got to earn those. You know, and this guy, he's just a holdover, and because we trust him to not go out there and really fuck it up unless it's a penalty. Um, Brandon Graham, yeah, uh, I think you know last year was an aberration. You know, it was, a, it was a career high for him, but you know he's settled back down. Still a threat, you know, a big threat, but. Um, this number of snaps for him and his what thirty age thirty five thirty six year you know old season, um he's in like what fourteen year vet now, I don't have a problem with him not carrying you know getting the lion's share of uh, snaps, man. But this guy here, on back to back uh, game ending uh, snaps for the Rams offense, getting those sacks that was huge, and just showing that that thumb might finally be reaching a level of comfortability and he's about to pop off. Josh Sweat as well, getting five pressures, two quarterback hits, three hurries. Um, yeah, he's in in uh, in good form as well, forcing that fumble and pulled uh, Puka Nakua, showing you know he, he doesn't have to get sacks to be active. All right, interior, it was an interesting divvying up. Um, Jalen Carter got the most snaps, but he was highly effective with those two sacks. Mike Williams, I think you know he deserved that as well. Um, Showing that he can he can carry if need be. Jordan Davis, I didn't notice a lot of these guys, and I still definitely didn't notice Morrow. But um, we came in with a good game plan, um, good uh, number of percentage of uh, snaps divvied up. So I have no problems with the interior way they played, getting the push, especially this guy leading the charge. Um, and I'm guessing that he was eating a lot of that, you know, um, attention. Nicholas Morrow, you know, fine, just make the interception. You know, and then uh, the fourth fumble, don't get too cute trying to roll in the ball. Maybe roll with, roll with it and then, you know, um, get a running start. Yeah, just dr drop on it. Uh, but, yeah, when Kobe comes back, I, I just I don't see how we take more off the field. He's the best, one of the best, you know, um, linebackers, uh, number two right now in, uh, by, in rated by PFF. He's just too effective. All right, corner. Um, it was interesting. We got Eli Ritz some snaps. I mean, that's a tough game going against Cooper Cup. It's well with Mario Goodrich, but could it be said that maybe you play Eli over Mario? We'd have to evaluate and see how he played overall. But, man, the MVP coming in to the slot, Bradley Roby, the way he was able to shut things down, especially in that second half, nothing doing, and then handling the switches and, and bunch formations, it really shows that we needed a veteran presence, and he gave us what we needed exactly. All right, Darius Lee, you know, he had solid play to me outside of that 39-yard uh, catch on the rocker route to uh, Cooper Cup. Pretty much burned everybody. James Bradbury led up two touchdowns, but he settled down in the second half. Replaying ship, solid, you know, very good as well. And Justin Evan, Evans, finally, those two playing back there, him and Reed, um, stabilizing force. But he also got down in by Cup as well. So, um, 
yeah, it's it's a work in progress. He's still dealing with some injuries, but um, overall, man, five and zero. Oh. It's not uh, it's not surprising that we're here, but um, the way we're doing it is interesting. All right, Eagles fans were so loud at Rams game that they helped Jalen Carter defense pick up the snap. So they had to switch to a hand signal, and Jalen no noticed that on the second go around, he picked up on it and said it helped him. You know, okay, well that's the sign they're going on. He could get off the snap faster because the Eagles fans were so loud at this away game, made it a home game for us. So, man, shout out to the fans for traveling well and um, supporting the team, no matter where we are in the country, man. Crazy. All right, two players who could make sense for the Eagles at the trade deadline. We are actually covered a couple, uh, a couple of one of these guys. Jarrell Peppers could be interesting. I do think he'd be a starting safety for us. He theoretically would be an upgrade over um, Justin Evans, but as well as just a reserve. He's also a utility man. He can play in the slot. He could uh, return um, kicks, so he could be a very good usage. But you know what would you know would Bill be willing to? let go of him that's the question um jeremy chin we already know about him solid guy could also play in sub packages you know be a uh joker player for us i would love to have a guy with that versatility here and uh cj henderson on the outside would also can play in the interior former first round pick that didn't pan out but um looks to be a solid player uh, or has the potential to be a solid player so how are we on the phone lines? We're going to see what he, he's going to dive into because we know he's going to get into something at the trade deadline. So we, I think we have to the end of this month um, to pursue a trade. We'll see how that goes. But, man, let's talk about this topic. Eagles aggressiveness at halftime, the difference between losing and winning. Yeah. 32 seconds to go. I thought, honestly, I honestly thought we would try for just like a field goal, um, try and get in position to kick a field goal. But that, um, I mean, a scramble to Hurts, nine yards. Then incompletion, but he got out of bounds on the scramble. So 24 seconds to the goal, then like 21 um, with uh, incompletion. But then the pass, 38 yards to uh, AJ Brown, really opened things up. Options, as well as uh, you know, the penalty was huge on the uh, horse collaring. 15 yards tacked on. We're at the 14. So then we try for the end zone shot. You know, seven seconds to go. So you don't want to you know prolongate it, elongate it, and. Um, the corner gets grabby, Hurts throws it short, and he pulls AJ down. We're at the one. And then it's like, bro, you know what we're going to do. The brotherly shove, tush push, um, hands on the buns with the runs. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, gets pushed in, and instead of going into halftime 14, down 14 10, we're up um, 17 to 14. And just that swing. Deflated the, the Rams. You can see the players. They go like they're just like ah crap, and then one hung his head. Cause I mean like what do you do? Like going into halftime, that is not the feeling that you want to go into with, and not the score that you want to go into with. But man, that really changed things up, and then adjustments to be made. But that was stealing money, uh, stealing momentum, and we stole the thunder and uh, deflated them before going into halftime. Or anyways, anyways, we're gonna stop there, get up out of here. Shorter video for me, but. You're not even watching, though. It's all good, though, because I love talking about the Eagles and love making these videos. So, like I said, we're going to deuce. But as always, as always, it's fly, Eagles, fly, and let's motherfucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life. Or Cintron laughs, or other social media.